those teams that are ranked in the top four. The only one that doesn't have a question at quarterback is Michigan. J.J. McCarthy's right. set, but Georgia's got to find a quarterback. Ohio State's got to find a quarterback. Alabama has to find a quarterback. And if you're looking at all these teams in that top four that we believe could all make a run of the playoff, that's the one I'm looking at with Alabama. I'm like, oh, they're good. I, I don't care who it is. They're good. One more quarterback topic I want to get to, and this came late last week. And for me, it's interesting because the Billy Napier era at Florida didn't get off to the greatest start. He had the mm. number four overall pick. I think it's where Anthony Richardson went, three or four, somewhere right there to the Colts. And if Anthony Richardson takes off in the NFL, it's going to be a bigger issue. But Billy Napier decided Wisconsin transfer Graham Mertz is going to be the guy that he goes with in year two. For some, maybe that was surprising. For others, maybe it wasn't. But Paul, year two for Billy Napier, a guy that a lot of people love as an offensive coach, Graham Mertz now dictates the momentum of what's going to be going on in Gainesville this fall. And it, it, the first game is really important. Uh, it, it was important last year. It didn't really matter in the end. They beat they beat Utah, but the Cam Rising injury is, is, a, is a question mark. And I don't have a good answer yet, Matt. Maybe you do. Uh, so it, there are some people in Gainesville that that believe they can go out there and steal that game. I'm not one of them. Uh, I would like to know who the quarterback is going to be for Utah. But it, it, assuming they lose that game, their schedule is is problematic. Uh, they have Kentucky and Tennessee uh, in the first few weeks of the year. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's entirely possible they could have three losses even before they get to Georgia and Florida State and – and the, and the garden variety SEC uh, East games. Uh, so, yeah, and, and if, if, I mean, the, the one thing that's going for Napier, and this this was, I'm sure Dan Mullen is finding this to be absolutely hilarious, that fans are saying, well, give him time. Uh, you know, he's, <laughs> he, he, I mean, they act like he inherited a, a program that had been shut down for 25 years. I mean, Dan, <laughs> Dan Mullen, uh, I mean, the year before, I think he, he was let go. He, I think he was in the SEC championship. He, he was always in New Year's Six games. Like, what? Yeah, no, but, uh, but I was interviewing a guy last night. He said, I said, so what's the upside? He said, he, he said, probably eight games. He said, it would be remarkable if, Florida could win eight games. I'm like going, Mullen got fired for winning nine. Uh, I, yeah, the eight, that, I mean, the standard of Florida used to be win it all. That's uh, it. So, so, so Napier has the advantage of just dumb down expectations, but he can't waste this. But I, I mean, he has a, he has a half a mulligan this season. I don't know how that carries. If you, if you uh, hook your, your tee shot. Um, but yeah, you know, if he can, he can beat somebody, you know, and then he's got Florida State, of course, at the end of the year, which is, a, you know, who knows. Um, but if, if he if he wins seven or eight games, he's going to he's going to survive. He's got one of the top quarterbacks coming in. But a, yeah. lot, of the, a lot of the criticism of him has just been sloppiness, the, the way he handled recruiting early on. But, you know, now he has, Matt, tremendous momentum on the recruiting trail, which which would you could say about 19 other schools at, at the moment. But the thing is with that, is that was the knock against Mullen. And, you know, yeah. I'm going to ask him about this next week. The knock on Mullen was the recruiting because he came out publicly and was just, just kind of talked about it. And that's how Billy Napier started. Right. And now he's kind of righted that a little bit. So the one knock that we believe that maybe got Mullen in trouble was the lack of wanting to recruit. Well, Napier seems to have dismissed all of that with his success. But it's just, if I look, if I do an autopsy of the Florida program, we're right. talking about with, with Spurrier and his dominance. We know what happened with Ron Zook. We know, look, Jim McElwain, by the way, didn't he win the East three years in a row? Yeah, but one thing you have to remember about Florida fans, you know, all this give, give Billy a chance. Uh, if he has a bad season, don't think his life will be good because Florida fans are cannibalistic. They they do not accept. I mean, they may talk a good game on August 14th, but they don't talk the same game on December 15th. Uh, they especially in a week when they watch the Meyer years on Netflix. It's a it's a four part series on uh, the two national championships in Tebow and Aaron Hernandez. Uh, so when they when they're reminded of how good this program used to be, they're going to have a harder time accepting losing to. Vanderbilt as they did last year yeah because Florida look growing up I'm 44 years old and so in my formative teenage high school years and all that Steve Spurrier in Florida that was college football they were the innovative 
badass SEC program with Spurrier throwing his visor, having a temper tantrum. They were Danny Warfel. They were Shane Matthews. They were all of these great quarterbacks, Rex Grossman, even Jesse Palmer got in. All these, Mm -hmm. they were getting whatever they wanted. They were the SEC. That was Florida. And then they got there again with Urban Meyer. And when you look at this day and age of the league, Paul, Georgia is running college football. Here comes Tennessee with Josh Heupel. Here comes LSU with Brian Kelly. Oh, how about that little team in Tuscaloosa and Alabama? Here comes Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Can Jimbo Fisher get it right at Texas A&M? Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin, they're a tough out. Shane Beamer has momentum in Columbia. All of this is to say Florida now has to leapfrog so many schools to get back to the relevance I think all of us grew up expecting. They're behind Kentucky. Uh, that's a program they used to own. I, I, I mean, they, they really are. And, and you know, I, I, Napier is going to have to do it on the field because you can only generate so much hype. And, and one thing about recruiting them at all these uh, sc- school – uh, supported websites and all the all the all the misinformation uh, that comes out on recruiting helps you get to a certain point. But if your record is bad, not, not to sound like Bill Parcells from 30 years ago, uh, it's not going to work. Yeah, you are what your record is, and or you are whatever that quote was. We know what you're getting at. So, hey, Paul, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that Johnny Manziel would have been the gift that keeps on giving just to, to to jump off a college football conversation? Because look. From where it was 11 years ago, 12 years ago, to where it is now, it's amazing when you get a time capsule of a film or a documentary to put it into perspective of what we're seeing just two weeks away from the start of the new season. Yeah, and that, it, what, what, by the end of the uh, alignment or realignment last week, it was like, okay, another one? I mean, it was, it's like you know, some of the things you, 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 know, you notice on the news channels up and down the dial. Oh, oh, okay, another one? Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it beca- you become uh, immune to it, desensitized. Uh, I mean, if somebody came out today, I mean, like we were waiting earlier today, well, what's FSU going to do? Like, who cares anymore? <laughs> right. So, Paul, I hope you're okay with this, but in the next couple of weeks, we're going to actually have to talk football. Is that all right by you? Yeah. I, I I put that off long enough, so I, I'm, I'm game. But, but at least Mullen is before me. He knows something about the sport. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.